I am from Lima, Peru. I was born there in 1989. I'm 32 years old. And I did part of my undergraduate degree in Lima in sculpture. I specialized in sculpture. And then I moved to the States about 11 years ago. And I wanted to complement my studies. I finished my undergraduate degree. And around the same time, I started working with glass, which was a passion I had since a very young age. And I felt that in working in sculpture, welding, carving marble, working with wood, glass was a material that I was missing and I was able to do that here. Since then, I lived in New York City for about 10 years and I recently relocated to the Hudson Valley. I'm in Newburgh. I've been here since July 2020. I started making art without realizing. I think that as a child, I always played with things and I didn't consciously start making it until I was around 14 and I started painting. There was a lady two houses down the street where I lived that taught painting. So I signed up for a summer break and I just loved it. And I think what I loved was that space or that quiet space or creative space of being with myself. And then I wanted to continue replicating that experience for myself. So then I think as I grew older and I, like as a teenager, you sometimes need a filter for your emotions or even as you get older and mature art seemed like a very good outlet for that but sculpture was also very challenging for me on a mental intellectual and technical level so I think art for me stopped being just about self-expression a long time ago it just felt like it wasn't enough it was a little selfish to just put my emotions out into the world so Working with sculpture allowed me to find other layers to that. Technical approaches to material, structure, structural analysis, being able to work with other disciplines as well. I'm still in that journey. It just continues to keep evolving. I feel like if I just have one role model or a couple, I'm dismissing other people. My grandparents, but... They also have their, like my dad would say, imperfections, you know? I mean, I don't think they're imperfections. It's just like everyone has their own human nature, so no one is absolutely remarkable. I really loved Louis Bourgeois when I was maybe around 18 to 20. I loved Kiki Smith. I had a crush on Kiki's work when I was in college in Peru. She was very influential for me as also a woman. Like, you, there's been few women sculptors, Linda Bengliss, Kiki Smith, there haven't been that many Louis Bourgeois. I think that they kind of like broke the glass ceiling. So if they could do it, then I was like, okay, cool, I could do it. So that's my studio. As I worked with glass for the past 11 years, I also fabricated for a lot of other artists and people, and that allowed me to build my studio and gather the equipment necessary and the materials. I shared the studio with my husband, who's called Jason Bauer. That piece, that lit piece at the back is one of his lights. And we call our studio the third room because it's like the third living space that we have besides our apartment and a deck. We share the studio. So we share the tools, equipment, and we have a table each. This is my table. This is work I was getting ready for a solo show I had at the beginning of the year at a gallery here in Newburgh called Visitor Center. The title of the show was The Return, and it features work in glass, copper, and sulfur. The main prompt about the work was to think about how energy flows in society and within ourselves, and think of the sculptures as metaphors for our own bodies, as well as how things work in our world. Copper is a material that carries energy throughout society through electric wires, batteries, etc. Sulfur is a byproduct of the fossil fuel industry that is considered toxic, but it also has highly healing qualities. And then glass is just a very responsive material that really responds to stimulus, and I see that kind of as our own bodies. Sulfur is extracted from crude oil. Around the 70s, it wasn't extracted, and it created acid rain. So after that, laws got passed that sulfur had to be removed. So right now there's an overproduction of sulfur in the world and not enough demand for it. So I buy it in powder form directly from fossil fuel companies and then I melt it. I melt it in a hot plate, in a pot, and then I use it for casting. This piece marked the beginning of the show, it's titled The Return, and it has a glass lens. 
I rarely work with glass in a polished sense, even though I usually do a lot of polishing for glass, but I really love to show it in its natural state. So this piece is the only piece in the show and actually one of the only pieces I've ever made as my own art that is a polished lens. I love how in that point of connection between the copper and the lens of the glass, there's a little pyramid that gets made. The title of the show, The Return, was kind of like talismans that would lead us into a journey of coming back to our true nature. That piece at the front, the black one, is titled No Caffeine Tomorrow. It is filled with used motor oil and that is sealed with epoxy as well. That piece kind of was the beginning of the show and the copper pipe went straight into a wall and that fueled the pieces throughout the show, of course, sim symbolically. So this piece here, Even Pool, is one of my first approaches at experimenting with glass as a material. I really work on seeing how it responds to stimulus or also how we can see through it and create different experiences. This piece, Enlightenment, is filled up with hand sanitizer and I see it as a modern monolith. This is a meditation seat made out of sulfur and the reason why I started working with sulfur was because my grandma in Peru gave me a sulfur bar when I was around five years old to rub it on my body because when I went to see her, I told her I had a headache or I wasn't feeling well. And as soon as she gave me the sulfur bar, it made a really loud popping noise and it broke in my hand. And she said, oh God, you have some like bad energy in you or you have some, they call it wind. It's like if you, if like a wind blew on you and you kind of absorb the wind. So this series, Sibilants, are named after the voiceless consonants in the alphabet. Um, so they make this like little hissing or, or sissing sound, which is the sound that the sulfur makes as it cracks when it absorbs the positive ions from our body. And that's the healing property. Sulfur is a naturally occurring crystal that has a negative ionic charge. And when it comes in contact to our body or surroundings, it picks up the positive charge that comes from our electronic devices, from stress, and it has the same healing properties as like seawater or pink Himalayan salt lamps, for example. This is a meditation seat, and it was kind of the, one of the pieces at the beginning of that series. That is an acupressure block that I made by massaging a mold of clay with my fingers, you can see the details of my fingers on there and it's solid, it's over 50 pounds, I think it's around 60 pounds. People were invited to stand on it and actually massage their, take their shoes off first of course, stand on it and massage the reflexology points in their feet. I really just love what materials teach us and how we can find the spiritual realm translated into material behavior and our interaction with it. This piece is titled Contraposto. So these pieces, one of the most, most recent pieces I've made in glass that combines two processes that I've been developing over the years. And one is the glass pool and the glass inflation. So for the past three to four years, I have been experimenting with and developing this process that's kind of an unconventional way of working with a material that is not really used in common practice. This was the first successful piece that I was able to pull and inflate at the same time. This is its sister piece, Downward Bow. This piece is also really special to me because it really has only one source of the flow that comes from the ground and the copper pipe guides the movement through and comes around and across and then back into the piece and it makes me think about how our bodies flex or how we flex our body, how we adjust ourselves to our surroundings. I really constantly think about how we take energy from the world and how we keep it and how then we give it to others and what we need to do or do to maintain balance. So a lot of my work and my research goes into that realm, also thinking what can we learn about that and how can we apply that into our lives. My influences come more from spirituality and wellness. There are some artists that I do love that work primarily in performance. There is just something about the immediacy of the performative action that I really, for a long time, as much as I was making sculpture, I did not consider 
like yes, the final result is sculpture, but I was in it for the moment. I was in it for the performance. A lot of the times I have a very vague idea of the shape. I think when I started doing it, I had no idea of what would happen. So for example, this is the largest glass pool I've made. It's seven feet long. I decided to mirror it in the back so it's a mirror. When you walk up to it, you can see yourself reflected, very distorted in a way, but reflected. But when I started making these, I didn't know that when I stretched the glass, it would have a waist. I started thinking I wanted to make a straight line. I was striving for the impossible intentionally. This is a very malleable, molten, natural material. So initially, I didn't know what shape I was looking for. And as I've learned how the material works, I can now strive for specific shapes. Although I still love to embrace in the journey, sometimes it takes five, ten goes to get a shape because you got to teach yourself how to make it. That series, Pools, I did them to find the balance in the place between mastery and surrender. So with myself, I really try to be as balanced as I can. And it's a challenge. I'm not saying I am. But in being able to sync myself with the material like that, I feel that overcoming the rush or the hurdle or the obstacles that that presents, I feel that in that experience, I am learning how to handle myself and how to handle other circumstances outside of myself. So these are the, all the initial pieces I made at that residency at Wheaton Arts in Millville in South Jersey. This program is made possible in part through the support of New York State Council on the Arts, Orange County Government, Shapiro's Furniture, and from donations from people like you. Please consider making a donation today at www.ocartscouncil.org. Thank you.